Yeah, so we've come to Boldna on the north kind of side of the island. And the deposits here are about 28 to 30 million years old. Find a lot of mammal remains, uh, lots of kind of alligators, and the things we're interested in today, fish remains. Let's go fossil hunt. Yeah, so we may have misjudged the tides a little bit, slightly higher than we intended, but it should be going down. It just makes uh, this a bit interesting to traverse. But we'll make it. We'll be fine. Might get a bit wet. Look at this turtle I just found. So there's a bit of turtle carapace. Is that focusing? Uh, and you can see there's these markings here, which are sort of like the suture marks but, um, on the carapace. It's also quite curved on the, the other side, so I think it might be an edge of, uh, of a bit of the shell. And then you can see it's really nice uh, like bone texture, or the blood vessels would be. So yeah, we're going to find, we're going to end up with loads of these. Uh, first find of the day, not too bad. Still yet to find any fish, but yeah, it's a decent chunk. So what you see here are these logs. They have fallen from the vegetation above, but what the best thing about these logs are is that they are point banks. So they pick up sediment, trapping it. And while doing so, you can find bits of fossils. Now, right now I've just found four little bits, four or three little bits of um, turtle. And this is a turtle known as Emmys, the flat shell turtle. So, So this little patch here, when we've been to this spot before, I've managed to find some tiny, tiny vertebrae of fish. Uh, probably a type of fish called an amiad, a uh, single representative, single living representative of which today is the bowfin fish. So it's a basal kind of um, ray finned fish. And uh, yeah, just like absolutely tiny verts I found amongst all of this, uh, this shingle. You have to get down on all fours and kind of look really closely. So that's what we're going to try and do now. See if we can find some fish, uh, maybe some teeth as well. Might give some sieving a go. We've brought some sieves. So we'll see if we can find some of these really tiny fossils. Oh, there we go. I actually found one. It's probably going to be way too small to see. I don't know if that's focusing at all. But that is an absolutely tiny fish vertebra. So you can see on one end, there's a kind of like a circular, um, circular section to it. And then it's quite elongated and then it looks like the other end has been broken off. So yeah, I mean, this is the sort of size you're talking about. Absolutely tiny in amongst all this, this gravel. Um, yeah, I'll make sure to put this away quickly before we lose it. Nice. Found something. Okay, maybe we'll try some sieving. Yeah, what you got? Oh wow, that's a really nice one. Much bigger than the one I just found. Very nice. Probably a amiad again. Seems to be what most things are here. Absolutely. Paleontology. <laughs> yeah, so we've got these sieves here we brought from our university, and uh, I've got five minutes five millimeter and one millimeter size mesh. So it's a really good technique for finding small vertebrates. Um, one of our friends, uh, Eddie's used it for um, searching for his shark teeth for his dissertation. And so we're gonna try, try our luck and see if we can find some fish birds, some fish teeth by just using a trowel, digging through the sediment and uh, washing it out through here, see if it collects anything. So let's give that a go. So I don't know if it's probably not going to 
pick up on the camera, but right there, it's actually worked. I have actually found one. So um, clearly there's quite a lot in this uh, sediment here, and this is a decent technique. I think I just need to get less sediment next time, just there's not as much to search through, but yeah, there's a really nice tiny one there. A tiny fragment of bone here. Um, almost looks like turtle carapace, actually. Don't know if it's worth taking. It's just got that sort of texture. Could be um, the Trionics genus, kind of rugose a little bit, or maybe a bit of a alligator scoot. Not sure. It's very small. Don't know if it's worth collecting. I don't see any clear vertebrae. So, the stratigraphy of this area, this kind of bluey grey, um, mottly sort of textured clay uh, on, the, on the actual foreshore here is the upper Hampstead member of the Boldner Formation. And then in the cliff there, you can see the Cranmore member. Now, the Cranmore member actually started out as a more, more brackish sort of environment that later turned into freshwater, while the Hampstead was more marine but with freshwater influences. Uh, on top of the Cranmore is actually some quaternary gravels, but we're not really looking through that. Um, and these environments, sort of, the comparison has been made to the Everglades of modern day Florida. Uh, so you're getting like crocodilians here, lots of fish, obviously, uh, a lot of different mammal species, including an interesting uh, gliding rodent called Eomis. Um, and so, yeah, you can find all sorts of, of mammalian taxa in the rocks here. Um, and it's a really great place to find stuff. It's, it's mostly not in situ material it's all because this is all like sliding a lot um and so you often find it like just kind of loose on the foreshore but uh yeah really good place to find a lot of different fossils what have you got a mammal jaw that's incredible that tooth is so nice. I don't know if it's focusing properly. So where do you find it? Just found it probably about a few, probably about 100 meters that way. <laughs> was it in the It in was the in the sediment, the, literally. It was just in the sediment. On the Picked it up and I was yeah. like, oh sugar, I've just found a limb bone. Look at it and there's a tooth sticking out right there. That is so There's nice. another tooth in the socket. <laughs> probably work out, oh, oh, there's a wear facet and everything. You could probably figure out this is probably Bophryodon, the most common mammal from uh, Bolna. So, yeah. Got quite a nice bit of what is probably the turtle trionics. Bit of the carapace. <laughs> so, right here, I just found another absolutely tiny fish vertebra. So, this is the, the top of the, the hamstead member. Um, I don't know if it's come from within it itself, it was kind of just resting on the top, so it could have just uh, eroded out, but it's really nice. It's got, seems to have all of the transverse processes still attached on one side at least. Absolutely tiny, so I don't want to lose it. I'll put it away now. Let's see if we can get some close-ups. Nice. Yeah, I just picked up this nice bit of uh, quite a big chunk of what's probably mammal bone, maybe reptile. It was just right here. Uh, so this is the site where we've actually found a really amazing um, mammal vertebra. Last time we were here, he found it. Um, not, still not sure what it is. It's currently being identified by the Oxford uh, Natural History Museum. But um, yeah, so this is the top of the, the Hampstead member. And um, yeah, look at that. You can very clearly see all of the, the bone texture, the holes for blood vessels, smooth surface, and then uh, another cut surface there. What have you just found? Another bit of bone. No idea if it's a mammal or a reptile. You can see the bone mark texture squished between these two flat surfaces. That indicates the bone. Let's find more. Quick, say something smart about it. Um, this is a alligatoroid um, scute, probably from Diplosinodon hattiensis. This little bump of a ridge there, it's called the keel. This flat surface is the articulate surface for the next osteoderm to go on top. Nice, good find. 
He's threatening me. Got evidence this now. Like this. Oh, thanks. Just got trolley cars back on top. For science. Salty. Okay, so we're back near the start now. We walked all the way back. I've just been searching in this little little area here where it's kind of collected next to the log. And again, managed to find a really nice fish, but well, you What did. we also found was what it looks like might be a modern or hopefully a few thousand year old um, mammalian tooth. Now we know that there has been archeological finds here. So the at the end of the day, it would nice to be would nice to find a humanoid mm. tooth, but because of how many agricultural history this area has, it might just be a, another sheep yeah. or a cow. It's nice and like one and half though. It's yeah. Cool. So you need to take it to the lab. Yeah. But yeah, so Boldner is a really fantastic place to find fossils, especially of fish and wide variety of mammals. I mean, I found loads of turtles today, some stuff that could be, oh, alligator, yeah. scoots. We've, uh, um, I found my mammal jaw. So this area is incredibly phosphoriferous for beginners and experts. Yeah, just make sure you get the ties right if yes, you do decide please. to come here. <laughs> we go on a really good day actually. Yeah. So that's just our luck. And dress correctly. Yeah. <laughs> You'll get very muddy, but it's been fun. Hope yeah. you enjoyed. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed following along on our fossil hunting adventure. It was great fun to go back to the spot and find so many fossils. This video was actually filmed for a segment on our new series that we're trying out, where I, along with two of my friends and fellow paleontology students at university with me, discuss the latest in paleontological developments, explore various topics in more detail than our usual videos, and talk about our own research on the prehistoric animals we're studying. We're also planning to film a lot more of our fossil hunting trips in the future, as well as record our visits to various museums and sites of paleontological interest, and we've also got some plans to interview paleontologists about their work. The first episode is already up, and although it's a little rough around the edges, it's been very fun to experiment with this new format, and we're very open to any suggestions and feedback that you're able to provide. We really want to include as much audience participation as we can too, and we'll be doing some votes as to what topics we should cover next or places we should visit, so please do come and join in. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and continuing to support the channel as much as you have been. It really means so much to us.